Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Global Pro Wrestling Inferno. I am your host, as always, Mr. Only Logan himself. Welcome to Only Logan TV. And boy, we got an episode for you tonight. A lot of great shit is going down. Two weeks away from Hollywood Massacre and we're over here still taking a world tour. We're in Spain now. Germany last week. Now we're in Spain taking the European tour. We've got the Cheetahs versus the Fabulous Classics. Be our second match of the night. That's going to be a hell of a tag team affair. These guys have been at it for years. First mate Jake versus Diente. Oh, a little, uh, little action here between the booty snatches and the night crawlers. Nice action there. Triple threat match between some of the ladies here. Two new superstars and one of the veterans here. Marilyn Shade, Isabella Marcella, and Anomalia square off in a triple threat match. And then we got a six man tag team between two spooky factions. The Disciples of Darkness taking on the Empire of Pain. Who the fuck is going to win that one? Triple Threat match on. Oh, a Triple Threat Championship match. My bad. Billy Bowers defending his Triple Threat title against Gal Galore and Senshi's own Unreal. Lola Love taking on Romy Yamamoto in some number. Probably a number one contender type opportunity there. One on one singles match. Those two are high ranking in the roster. So, big win. Mean a lot of things there. Triple Threat 
Oh yeah, this is the semifinal match, triple threat on the west side. Diego Cruz, Owen Winters, and uh, was, was it Ryan Lyons? We got Rico Sleeves versus Finn in our main event in a, a new match we've got here, a GBW exclusive manager in a cage match. But first, we've got Cynthia Storm taking on Heavy Flow, two newcomers. I'm gonna just show you what they got. Their first season here in GBW. Turn the vocals up a tiny bit. Okay, I was messing with it earlier. I must have messed with it too bad. I'm just gonna turn up the vocals here in my main gain. Put in the main gain, it's in the main frame. Does that sound better, Eli? Please be my ears for me right now. Hey, hey. Cynthia Storm. The power lifter turned pro wrestler, Cynthia Storm. Ready to storm out this fucking competition tonight. Not gonna be an easy feat. She's got heavy flow tonight. I mean, she didn't have heavy flow tonight. She's got a face heavy flow tonight. Turn this up, Pint says. Turn it up, Pint says. Turn it up, yo. It's some one-on-one. -on -one. We're gonna have some real fun. But the beat almost done. Ooh, that was on beat. That Drago was tight. Pine, welcome in. Just in time for the first match. Heavy flow, making her way to the ring. She's gonna take on Cynthia Storm, who has tons of potential here. Heavy flow, an indie wrestler from fucking Nebraska, I believe. Kind of a throwback. Ooh. What was that? Fine, thanks for the redeem. I might have to put my uh, alerts a bit bigger so I can actually read what it's about. <laughs> oh, wait, there's quits activity. That's right. Appreciate that, Pine. Thank you, thank you. This is heavy flow, man. She's powerhouse as well. Definitely the, the you know, she's got the size advantage in this fight. Very rare for Cynthia Storm to be the smaller fighter here. But it's happening. Rico in the corner, there we go. This might be better. If you peep the bottom left corner, there's a new Only Logan TV logo. You guys don't know, I haven't reached out to, I haven't followed too many people back because I'm waiting this Sunday for my new Instagram account to kind of be revealed as the Poncho Rico music video will roll out. That's the plan. But Only Logan TV is now Instagram official. We've got two accounts, folks. I'm trying to get twice the likes out here. So please follow Only Logan TV at Only Logan TV. Pretty easy. Oh, heavy flow firing back. But here comes Cynthia Storm. Bitch slapped her. Not gonna let her put up with that shit. Forearm to the face. Heavy flow missed her left hook. Good thing she's not a boxer. Oh, but a DDT. And Cynthia laughing at her. Cynthia Storm has been impressive in just her short time here. GPW. Two count. Almost had it right there. That impressive moonsault. Oh, that's what she really thinks of heavy flow there. Doesn't see her as competition, apparently. Didn't know she was this cocky. She seems very humble when I talked to her backstage. Pancho Rico. Yes. Yes, indeed. That time's coming soon. Three weeks away from that. It's going to be a hell. Yeah, I got a lot planned for the end of the month here. Guys, as we transition into Labor Day, there's gonna be a lot going on. A live stream subathon, GBW pay per view to start off that week. Hollywood Masquerade on the 25th. Show uh, the live stream subathon on the 31st. The debut of the Ballad of Pancho Rico movie on the 1st of September. And then I'll leave you guys alone on on the second, on actual Labor Day. Maybe I'll stream. I'll probably stream. Oh, heavy flow drops her military press style. Oh, Cynthia had that scouted. Went for a slap. Nope. Heavy flow. The stalling suplex trying to impress Cynthia. They're trying to press her opponent here with this. Trying to show off how powerful heavy flow can be. She's not just a funny name. 
Oh, the old claw to the, what is that, collarbone? <laughs> collarbone claw. No, oh, try to go for a tsunami splash, missed it. You missed it. And that might be the start of the momentum swing here. I feel it, I feel the energy, I feel it. Out here in Spain, bro. Forgot what city, but we're in Spain. I don't think it was Madrid. I would remember Madrid, but, oh God! Cynthia remembered how to fly, at least momentarily. Tune in at 8 p.m. CST, you cowards. That's right. You tell him, fine. That's pretty much start time all the time. Unless I get frisky and I'm, or get a little antsy and I'm like, let's, let's get on an hour early. Or if I'm running late, it'll be an hour late. But eight is a great way to shoot for. Great one to shoot for. It gives me enough. Seems to be perfect. Seven, I'm rushing myself. Nine, I'm waiting too long. Eight is the right spot. You know seven's more my kind of number. Here comes Cynthia. No. Erox says maybe Labor Day we can do a beat making stream. Yeah, I might be down for that. That sounds kind of fun. Whoa. Picked her up, threw her around. Heavy flow gonna drag Cynthia into the middle of the ring here. Going for the cover, just try to avoid the rope break here. Two, might do it, no. Cynthia kicks out. That's right, I'm promoting your stream. Like Matt Hardy when he was wrestling Christopher Daniels. He was told, he told everyone in WWE to watch Ring of Honor. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> I didn't see that. I haven't watched a lot of TNA lately. I think the last one I watched was when Jeff and Matt, Matt had a match, but then Jeff debuted. That's the one I watched. I always got a soft spot for Jeff. I like Matt, but Jeff, I just, he's the one I always like. Or related to more, or just liked more because he had a vibe to him. You know, he wasn't a better promo. He wasn't like a more intelligent wrestler like Matt Hardy was, and had a cooler gimmick or anything. Matt Hardy probably was, if I'm unbiased, he was probably the better wrestler throughout the career because Jeff had a, they both had a lot of demons, but Jeff had more, for sure. But I still vibe with him more. He's just a tortured soul, bro. You don't know him like I know him. <laughs> oh, heavy flow. Oh, oh. Pump handle, fall away, slam. She calls that the, the tampon. I don't know. T tampon throw. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what she calls that? She's keeping it a mystery. <laughs> she said gas. And I, I couldn't guess right, so she just never told me. Oh, I know this one. It's the overflow. Nope. <laughs> Reverse the overflow. That could have been it. No. Oh, running elbow drop by Cynthia Storm. I will always love V1. Nah, I was sold on the Matt Hardy version one ahead of its time. S still will go down as ahead of its time gimmick. One of the best. Underrated. Severely underrated is Matt, so he gets that category. He might be the, one of the most underrated. Next to, like, Christian. Ooh, I'd say Christian Cage. I didn't realize how good he was until he's doing this whole shit now in AW, but, you know, I always knew he was a good hand or whatever the fuck they call it. Oh, this is the Stormbreaker. Hold on, she's got the Stormbreaker in. Oh, man, been distracted in conversations. Cynthia Storm gets the win. Big win for Cynthia Storm taking out Heavy Flow. Stop that flow in its tracks. She's getting arrested. He grabbed a mic and said, Watch me in honor. I'm wrestling Christopher Daniels. And got tackled in arrest. Oh. Wait. I, so he's on Ring of Honor? Isn't it the same? Wouldn't that be the same kind of thing as like... Working for AEW. I'm confused. But then again, they have those doors open, so I guess it really doesn't matter. You can be signed to TNA and still work there, so it's just odd that he's doing that already. 
Or maybe life is just fast forwarding like crazy and he's been there for months and I haven't even realized it. Stormbreaker, there it is. Cynthia Storm, another impressive win. She is rising the top here quickly. Quickly out here. I forgot to switch cameras. What's up? What a quick ascent she's having so far. Cynthia Storm. Damn. She's got like a Jade Cargill ascent right now. She's killing it. She's really killing it out there. Oh, next up, we've got a tag match, folks, between two. Well, one, one faction everybody loves and one faction everybody loves to hate. Sleazy Family taking on Fabulous Classics. Let's get it. Skirt. Vroom. Chia. Long time ago? Is it really that long? No. Well, I've been living in my own little world these last the following contest 31 years. <laughs> living in a box. Motherfucker, you can go and kick rocks. It's the cheetah's motherfucker. Don't repeat her. He'll hit you like a Henry repeater. That's their senorita, Stacy Sleezer. She's a cheetah. Oh, that's what happened two weeks ago. We had a mixed tag match here with uh, Youngblood Bishop. That's how it ended. A low blow to the sack here with Flying Bronson. That's kind of what started this match. Wasn't done with that low blow, though. I mean, Fabulous Classics got their win, but by DQ. And Cheetah's definitely won the war here. So Youngblood wasn't done, man. He wasn't done. He was about to smoke him with a chair, but no. The new classic Travis Peters came to the d save the day at the last second. That's why you got friends out here in GBW. That's why everybody's teaming up in factions these days. AW's doing it. New Japan's already been doing it. And here they come with their newest member, the Soren CC. That's why she's not in the chat. She's about to manage her favorite wrestler, the one that trained her, the Flying Bronson, everybody's favorite character. That's him right there. Still has yet to win singles competition, but he's found a good home here in the tag division with his buddy, the new classic Travis Peters. And now their protege, their new superstar, Soren CC. Yeah, don't tell her she's not actually wrestling. That'll motivate her to actually tune in more, like right now. She'll be like, oh shit. And then she's gonna realize, oh, I'm just standing there? This is lame. <laughs> He might do more than that. We've seen managers pretty much take control of this match. I can't wait for that main event, folks. A new match. A new match type I have invented, folks. Another one. There's been the dumpster match. There's been the junkyard match. Now I've created the manager in a cage match. Where each person, each opponent will have one manager they're choosing to be trapped inside of a cage to avoid any interference. But we want to, you know, it's like we don't want them to run in or anything like that. So we got them at bay. We put them in a cage, now we know where they are. It's almost like a Shark Tank match, almost. But you're not fighting for that person, or whatever the fuck. They're fighting for the Chats Championship. It's Regal Sleeve versus Finn, I believe. If I can remember correctly, it was only like 10 minutes ago. Damn, tough man, Terry Tonga, putting in work. Referee bend over. Doesn't really know what to do in the corner there. He's just kind of glitching out. Really not enthusiastic about this match. He feels like he's going to get hit. Which is probably right. Flying Bronson is deep throated. <laughs> Tough man Tonga. Oh shit. Said that a hundred times. I don't know why I laughed. And that Bronson doesn't know what to do with him. There he goes. Throws him into the corner. Oh, stiff elbow from Tough Man in a boot to the face. Bronson down. Oh, there we go. Premonition. It wasn't long. Oh, they're going to make a tag here. This is a legal tag here. <laughs> legal tag made. Oh, double team on the ref. And the Cheetahs up to no good. Oh, damn. Youngblood sliding out of there. Somehow he's outside now. Taking out Travis Peters. Exactly what they want to do. And the Cheetahs be cheating. The Cheetahs are already cheating. Now it's all gone to chaos. Referee not even trying to control this match. 
nothing really he can do. He's just going to get beat up if he tries. That's the type of environment, the work environment, these refs have to go through. <laughs> You're a GPW. You just never know when you're going to get hit with, <laughs> with the left. Or even just, you know, double teamed like we just saw there off the top rope. We're in a four count. I believe Youngblood and Flying Bronson are the legal opponents here. Yep, I'm correct. Youngblood just wants a piece of Travis Peters, though. He's pissed about him uh, thwarting his chair attack two weeks ago, as we saw. Saving Flying Bronson, saving Flying Bronson from a chair attack. Words, they work sometimes. But sometimes my tongue wants to fart. <laughs> you ever have a tongue fart? That's what I call it. Good old tongue fart. Flying Bronson now throws. Young blood back in the ring just so the ref can get thrown out of the ring. Nope, into the turnbuckle. Uh oh, he might throw Bronson into the ref. No, sat it against it. Wow, tag made again. They're gonna do another double team to the ref. This is completely legal, folks. At least the tag is, is what I'm saying. I don't know how much about the double team, but you know, they, each GPW's got lax rules out here. There is disqualifications, folks. It's just you know, I think they get like a three strike rule or something. They might be on their last strike here. It's kind of up to the ref's discretion, I mean, but. You know, sometimes he'll blow that whistle right away if it's egregious enough, but he usually, you know, he's told there's a three-strike rule. Because you can't just go and disqualify everybody. Oh, shit, hit him with a dropkick, but he landed on Tough Man, on his teammate. Oh, and Youngblood gets stunned. Honor, it's honor. Oh, but Terry Tonga back to his feet, pummeling. Pummeling away at Bronson. He's got to make a tag. He does. Travis Peter making the hot tag. Let's go, Mr. Peters. From Stillwater, Texas. Oh, that's Stillwater pile driver, bitch. <laughs> Got him good. Oh, but he just dragon screwed him. Oh, roll up. One, two, three. Ref, turn around. Turn around, ref. Four, five, six. Jesus Christ. Poor officiating from bend over. Got distracted by a turnbuckle being exposed. He should just be used to it. He should just let it fly, to be honest. It's on them if they use it and they, you know, get disqualified for it. Trying to go for dirty taxi tactics again. You can just come to expect this from the Cheetahs. The tag team of the Sleazy family. They may be the sleaziest of them all. I mean, obviously Rico is, but they might be sleazy two and three. <laughs> Got an ad break coming up in here in 30 seconds. Watch out. Attack of the ads coming your way. I wish you could stop it. I can't. I can't stop it. There's no stopping it. Except if you subscribe. Oh, there is a way to stop it. Just gotta hit that little sub button. Boom, poof, magic. They're just magically gone. How great is that? Oh, our actual tag here made in an actual double team move being worked on by the classics here. Bam! It wasn't the referee this time, so I was trying to get to there. A really long-winded way to do it, but there we go. Whoa! Almost got him. Young Blood looking very impressive here. Minus all the slizzery. Oh, bow and arrow stretch. Haven't seen this since 1987. When Psychosis took on Juventud Guerrera in episode 47 of Monday Nitro. It was at Saskatoon, Canada. Great time. <laughs> Look it up. Travis Peters now. Punches Youngblood in the corner. What's going to happen here? A little double team action from the Fabulous Classics. Let's go. Whoa. Double row. A wheelbarrow fishbone move. Or whatever. Wishbone. Oh, I said fishbone. <laughs> wishbone, not fishbone. Yeah, there we go. And a headbutt to the gonads. Apparently that's legal. That might be strike one. Oh, and a rock bottom. Bronson bottom. Gives him the shape of his L on his forehead, but a tag made a tough man, Terry Tonga. And Youngblood rolls out of here. Oh, everybody get your fart noises ready. Oh. 
perfectly timed. Let's go. The triple butt bump. We all love it. Bronson with the Bronson. Swanton. Bronton. The Bronton. It didn't work, though. He can't jump very far, even though he is a high flyer. That's his... What he told me his category is. He's not wrong. He does go to the top rope a lot. The only super heavyweight high flyer we got here. Maybe in existence. If you don't count, you know, Keith Lee or something. Terry's had enough. He's going to try to pin this mofo, but he's got to drag that big carcass into the middle of the ring here. Cover made. One, two. Oh, I'm just surprised Bronson's uh, trunks have remained white this entire time. <laughs> Said the same outfit for three seasons. Shit his britches every single time in the ring. He's done that move at least once a, once a match. <laughs> it's a beloved move. You would just think you'd see some stains by now. Oh, there's a stain. A little blood stain inside the mask of Flying Bronson. Death device here. A modified version. They call that the Cheetaroo. I don't know. <laughs> Cheetorita. The Cheetorita. That might have done it. No. Young blood. Ooh, right hook. Good night, Sally. Young blood going back up to the top rope. Bronson sees him. Oh, he catches him. He catches the cross body of the strength of Bronson. Whole lot of meat to this man. Oh, and he throws him halfway across the ring. Good God. Talking mad shit, Dusty Road style over here. Oh, no. Wow. Holy shit. The strength of Youngblood. Deceptive. And little insult to injury there. You gotta love it. For the cover. One. No. Travis Peters there to save his teammate once again. Oh, there he goes, though. <laughs> and now no one can save Bronson. CC, welcome in. Didn't realize you were farting. That was you. CC, of course, at ringside as well. She's on her phone right now, of course. CC never put her phone down. She's on her phone at ringside, not even paying attention to Flying Bronson getting his ass kicked. Her, pro her mentor. Bronson says, no. How dare you, Bronson Bottom. And Youngblood is hurt. A tag made to Travis Peters. Smart move, he's the fresher man in this series. No, oh, but he gets kicked. Youngblood wanted that to happen. Oh man, here it comes. Oh, and around and around and around we go, the UFO. This is a hell of an airplane spin. We're going the other way now. We're going the other way now. Oh my god, the airplane spin of death. I'm getting dizzy just looking at it, folks. Cece says, Bronson got this. I hope you're right. It was a shame what happened two weeks ago in your mixed tag match. It was you and Bronson versus Youngblood, the guy in the ring right there, and Stacy Slees, who's ringside at this moment. Youngblood hit Bronson right in the balls. Disqualified his team. But he's about to get the last laugh, gonna hit him with a chair, but Travis Peters, the man in the ring right there, with the white pants on and throwback look, he came to save the day, luckily. Now they're settling in the ring, man. These guys got a beef. There's a long-standing beef here. One of Rico's enemies, for sure. If Rico, Rico out there, he's probably got an enemy list. You ask him about his enemy list, he's probably got an enemy list. Seems like he's the type to have, like, a list of people he just doesn't like. Oh, and the ball shot again, but the ref wasn't looking. No, you got to be kidding me. CeCe's in the corner yelling at the ref to turn around, turn around. Oh, it's too late now. Mic check. One, two, one, two. One, two, three. All the cheetahs win. They cheat again. Cheating again, but winning again. Those damn cheetahs, I tell you. Right? You motherfucking accuser. <laughs> accuser of the fucking brethren, you motherfucker. Can't say I'm surprised, they, they cheat all the time. It's just if they're gonna get away with it or not. And this time, unfortunately, they got away with it. You would think Bendover would know better. 
messing with the cheetahs in a match. He knows these guys. He should know their tendencies by now, but I think it's the brain damage from all the times he's just gotten assaulted throughout the two seasons he's been with us. We should probably retire him soon. He's already, like, he's 24. He's 24 years old, but he's got gray hair. Really stressful job being a, a GPW referee. <laughs> he had full, nice, luscious, reddish blonde, brown hair, and now it's just gray. That was that was one year. Pretty great. But I digress, because here are you winners, folks, whether you think it was fair or not, the cheetahs cheat again. Son of a bitch. Yeah, boo. I want fair play in this goddamn organization. They're running rough shot around GBW, but I can't do shit about it because it's freaking Rico Sleeves is gang. They're never going to get fired. All right, one-on-one -on -one match between first mate Jake and Deante. Captain LaFranc and Boogeyman have been having some beef as of late, so it looks like uh, they both had their backup. Fighting some, uh, fighting in this match tonight. Here he comes, the first mate of the booty snatches, along with his captain. They're not booing. They say, <laughs> like, oh, is that a, is that a pirate thing? And they should be saying arg, but they're definitely not saying arg. Booty Snatcher, Booty Snatcher, whoa, whoa, whoa. The Here they come from the seven seas. First make Jake the beloved best friend of Captain LeFranc. These guys have a tremendous friendship. I mean, you know, it's almost like a master-student friendship. Almost like a father figure of sorts for, you know, first mate Jake is definitely a... Feels like a son to Captain LeFranc. He, told, he taught him how to pirate, basically. He just washed up one day on shore. While Captain LeFranc was enjoying some fresh grog from the local... Wherever the fuck you get grog from. Tavern. And his opponent, <laughs> by the Boogeyman. He adopted him and raised him. Made him its first mate. It's canon now. Here comes Diente. Man whose mind has been warped from the boogeyman. Spent way too much time with him. Literally morphed into a demon-like creature. He was a, such a different creature. You go back to season one, he was a different character. Oh, look at these guys just beefing each other. They're just beefing at each other. Who's going to make the first strike? It's like a social media beef. No one's going to hit each other, but they just keep throwing insults at each other. Oh, if somebody... Deante finally struck, but he missed. Jake trying to get the prevent preemptive strike, but he just got in his face. There we go. Now, okay, here we go. Did we mention it's uh, no holds barred out here? Anything goes. That just spice it up a bit. Here, Deante haven't even taken his cool cape off yet. No. Oh. Got ambushed by first mate. I had some strong words for him. <clears throat> oh, I was gonna say it's finally gonna get to the ring, but maybe not. I just want to get to the top rope. Oh, an elbow from the top. Deontay's crazy, but we knew he was loco. From the get-go, you hang out with Boogeyman, you're gonna be a little crazy. Yes, Deontay originally from Guadalajara, Mexico, just. Arrived at GPW in season one, just a nice baby face, typical lucha mid-card wrestler, you know what I'm saying? Like, very over with the children, always had that smile on his face, it wasn't as scary, as intimidating as the smile he currently dons. But, uh, got injured by the sleazy family, of course. They were just taking people out in season one. And, uh, so did Nayati, the... Native American wrestler we have. And they came back. Must have... Boogeyman must have reached out to them in their fucking dreams or something, but... He uh, both talked them into becoming a faction. 
known as the Nightcrawlers. And then we saw Diente down this new look. Nayadi had a new look. They roamed as the Nightcrawlers for quite some time as Boogeyman as their like third teammate slash manager. They had some success, but they never wanted to take some titles, which frustrated both of them, the whole group. And uh, Boogeyman and Diente hatched a scheme to turn on Nayadi. And ever since then, Nayadi and Diente have been fiercely, they've had a fierce rival here as well. Diente does not have a lot of friends anymore. Only, only Boogeyman, really. You call that a friend? Dude eats worms, bro. Diente's got first mate Jake up here and just in the crowd here, dude. It's been, fight's been in the crowd for the last minute. This might end on a table, though. Jake, oh, avoids the table. Oh, Diente says you're not getting away. He's going to try to get, oh, no, airplane spin, airplane spin. We've seen this before. The tassels make it cool, though. Oh, and he throws him on a chair. And he's proud of his work. Like a serial killer. Admiring his work. Ow, oh, owie. What a neck breaker from Diente. Using his whole kneecap to uh, throw off that L1 and L2 up in that neck. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go, a shoulder breaker, then into a table. That's very unique. I've never seen that. No, oh, and a chair to the face. I've seen that a lot. I've seen that one a lot, but it's very effective, so that's why. Right in the bad eyeball of first mate Jake. I really don't know if that's a real, like he really needs the eye patch yet, or if that's just part of the gimmick. Jake's leg is fucked. Somebody go get the medical. His leg is broken. Look at his leg. I wish we could zoom in on that, but Diente is kind of ruining that. Can he walk? He's getting up somehow, but he's limping. He's totally li Oh, Diente is taking out Captain LeFranc. He's going for Captain LeFranc now. This demon is loose. This demon is loose. But Jake is back somehow, some way with a broken freaking leg. How is he doing it? No, did he do that with a broken leg? Oh no, he's doing it. The adrenaline. He's kicking him with a broken leg. That's a really dumb move. Why do you keep kicking him? Ah, back to the leg. That's going to be the story of the night. Diente is going to probably start targeting that leg. If he hasn't started already. Oh, just toss him on the announce table. Anything goes here. It's going to be unpredictable as she at. Oh, no, the senton misses. Jake proud of himself for getting out of the way. Way to go, first mate. Oh, he's still kicking him. Why is he kicking him with a broken leg? I can't believe this man. Not a good strategy. He's going to grab a table. We've got tables, folks. Oh, the wood to the face. You big disgrace. No, oh, he's going for Boogeyman, too. He's not scared of the Boogeyman. Not even with a broken freaking leg. He sets the table up. He's running on a broken leg. Oh, he kicked him again with a broken leg. How many times we gotta say that? <laughs> oh no, the steps. Don't do it, don't do it. Ah, more brain damage for Diente. Part of the reason why he probably was so easily convinced to join Boogeyman's Faction. He's had a lot of brain damage leading into that. He was developing weird superpowers. <laughs> then he's decided to use those powers for evil. He can basically turn lights on and off. Like many, many superstars here. Cyphers of Darkness and the Syndicate can all do it. I guess the Lords of Olympus do it, but it's all white light instead of black light. So it's all light instead of dark. But they're not good guys. Ow. Oh my god, a neck breaker on the chair. That might have really broke his neck. He might even have a broken freaking neck now. Oh no. A suplex. Oh, I was going to say he wouldn't survive that through the announce table. Oh, Diente almost got German through the announce table. Barely missed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I shouldn't have spoke the name. I, I invoked it by speaking its name. The announce table. They're fighting over who's gonna go through it. 
Who is it gonna be? No. Place your bets in the chat. Who is gonna be going through that announce table? Will it be first mate Jake? Will it be Diente? Will it be neither? Will it be both? That, well, that's not possible. But. Oh, but that's possible. Steal a chair to your face, bro. Oh, the fight continues. Where? <laughs> oh, that one almost did it. Oh, Diente says enough. Enough of this squabbling for the announce table. Nope, maybe not. He just wanted to get in there and taunt quick. He's back at it. Oh, he's going for that leg again. The leg again. Oh shit. That broken leg is just getting more broken by the by the move. Oh, Jake time trying to break Diente's leg there. Oh, is he going to go through it? Diente might be going through it. Oh shit! Doesn't look good for Diente. He better get up. Oh, gets punched in the face. That might stall him for ten seconds. No, don't do it, first mate. Don't do it from the crow's nest on a broken freaking leg. Oh! The crow's nest elbow. Really from the crow's nest. Crowd loves it. Deante might be dead. He is, looks like a dead body. A dead demon body. S sitting at the feet of our multi-language announce team. My word. Thanks for the fart. <laughs> He's farted out a sparkle. I gotta turn that sound off when people redeem sounds. I don't know why it does that. Something I can do some other time. Jake smokes Boogeyman. Diente's still out of it, completely out of it. Doesn't know where he is. That announce table really messed him up. Oh! Table to the Boogeyman's face again. Diente just gonna let him just kind of cook. He just wants to take it in the ring. He's sick of being out there. Oh no, he was just waiting for him. Oh, he was just waiting for him to strike. And he struck. Like a creature, like a predator, lying in wait. That's what he was doing. Oh, throws him into the ring post. My God, this match has been brutal. No one's there to stop it. This is all legal, folks. Even Boogeyman can join in. He's joining in. Boogeyman is joining in. Jake trying to fight them both off. I don't think that's possible. Captain LeFranc might have to step in here. I know he wants to be the honorable type. It's like his son in there, though. It's like his son. There he goes. He's coming. Here comes Captain LeFranc from the crow's nest. Here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Worth a shot. He's still there, though. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. He's a wank and a whiff. And he's here, though. He's trying to even the numbers here. He's throwing fists. He's not really hitting much. There he goes. Oh, he smoked the shit out of Boogeyman. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Now he's in his face. He's telling him, you better stay out of this match or he'll make him walk in the plank. That's it. Boogeyman disrespected the captain. He's going to make him smell his armpit. You don't want that. He's smelly as shit. I've yet to even, you know, the word travels fast around here in the locker rooms of GPW. And not a single wrestler has yet to see him take a shower or even hear about it. That's how stinky this man is. He lives on a ship for shit's sake. For ship's sake. <laughs> Diente working on first mate arm here. What's Cat LaFranc doing? Setting up a table here. Might be trying to take out Boogeyman once and for all here. Oh, there he goes. He's got beef with the Boogeyman. He said he's not scared of the Boogeyman. Oh. Doesn't look like the Boogeyman's scared of him, but he isn't, he's reeling. Doesn't know what to do. Oh, he's about to swing on Diente there. 
He's trying not to interfere, but he got too close. Oh, Deante might put him away here. The Frank said, fuck it. <laughs> he said, fuck it. I don't care about interference now. It's no holds barred. The Frank's getting in there. They were trying to cheat first. He was trying to keep it civil. But now he blew a gasket out of here. The Frank's been having a, quite the more of an angry streak lately. I don't know. You know, he's got that alter ego, the, the Kraken. He's still a goofy wrestler as Cab Frank. Usually all fun and games, but when he's the Kraken, he is a very, very intimidating, mean, scary individual. And maybe, you know, you think at some point, if you play a character for so long, you can almost become that character, you know what I mean? Or fucks with you. You almost get like a split personality, you know what I mean? I know what that means. I think Rico Slees know what that knows what that's like too. <laughs> he plays a new character every day. He's a fraud. Oh my god, Boogeyman just back suplexed. First made Jake onto those ladders, but Kevin LeFranc fucked up the referee. That would have been a 10 count for LeFranc here to save the day. It's fine when the good guys do it. <laughs> Deontay sprawled out about on those ladders. Oh. Jake got a little hasty there. Uh oh, no, no, Diente driver, not on those ladders, not on the ladders, that might break his freaking neck. Ah, oh, he already had a broken freaking leg. This might be it. One, two, kick out. No, he probably did break his neck. Oh my God. Camilla Frank didn't see it happening the whole time. He was too busy taking out Boogeyman. And look what happened. Could have saved first mate Jake from getting his neck broken. But instead, owie. <laughs> but instead, we got a broken leg and a broken neck. I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of action from first mate Jake for quite a while. At least not in the ring. Might be ringside, but that's uh, that was a whole lot whole lot of ouch dude that's a lot of ouch Deante big win in this extreme rules match next up triple threat action between Anomalia Isabella Marcella and Marilyn Shade let's get it on three different styles clashing tonight Transition to a triple threat match between some ladies tonight. This fine lady is from Naples, Italy. So we got a little Italian flavor in the GPW now. Then my home people, my homeland. Welcome Isabar Is Isabella Marcella. Say that, that was easy to say. You should roll off the tongue, it's a nice name. The flower of Italy she calls herself. I'm not sure what flower that is. It looks like a lilac. I have no idea. Who knows flowers? Is that a daisy? Is that a lilac? Definitely not a daisy. It's got pink around the edges. Well, whatever it is, let me know. So then I'll just say she's the whatever the flower's name of Italy. That'll be her new moniker. <laughs> but don't let her beauty fool you, folks. She's uh, got a mean streak. She's kind of got an attitude. And this lady's taking GBW by storm. The smallest fighter on the roster but might be the most I guess unpredictable one of them all she's a total anomaly in the ring folks a lucha libre com a luchadore or a luchador do they just both luchadora female or male or is it like luchadora probably luchadora the luchadora from Mexico She's quick, she's fast, she's high flying, she's all over the place. She's an anomaly.
I'm sitting here talking to me. Duh. Oh, sorry, Cece, I was reading that whole thing. Tell Joey say hi. Did she like her present? She like that unicorn? Totally wrapped in some that amazing Target bag. <laughs> here comes Marilyn Shade. And from the punk rock alt chick Darby Marilyn Allen's girlfriend. Shane. Word on the street. They don't want to admit it, but it's true. The rumors are true, folks. <laughs> You're into that kind of stuff. <laughs> Marilyn Shade, been with us since season two. She kicks ass. She's back at GPW. This might be her first ma first or second match back. She's gonna try to get some gold now. Now that, that now that they have an Inferno title as well, not just the world title, that's twice the opportunity to win some gold and uh, winning this triple threat match could really boost yourself up in the rankings. It's going to be a tough task though. These two newbies seem to be uh, quite the competitors. They may be newbies at GBW, but they're well experienced professional wrestlers like everybody here on the roster. Besides that uh, guy person who has never won. But he's a good hand. And I guess CC, she's in like her, she's only had like two matches. <laughs> but she's trained by Bronson, I trust it. I trust Bronson. Damn, Isabella and Marcella just letting Anomalia and Marilyn Shade have their own little match in there while she just goes and rests. This actually might be the right strategy. You may not like it, but it's not a bad strategy from the Italian here. Oh, she's talking shit to the crowd here. That's what I'm saying. She's got that attitude. They're probably jaw-jagging it or being like, hey, you're a coward for not getting in the ring right now. But you know what? It's not a bad strategy, if I'm being honest. It's going to let them two duke it out while you could serve all your energy on the outside. Not a bad not a bad plan. Can't hate it. The baby face commentator in me wants to hate it. But the Rico Sleaze in me wants to love it. Nice poison rana from Anomalia. Oh, big forearm. Knocks Marilyn down to the ground momentarily. Got to hold her feet. Jeff Hardy style. Isabella Marcello now finally in. Waiting for a moment. Anomalia's back was turned. And a DDT for doing so. She's going right to Marilyn. Oh, but Marilyn saw it coming. Oh. On drag. Look at the split-legged leg drop. Amazing for the cover. Oh, Anomalia broke that up. Could have been a quick finish. Reverse DDT. Marilyn now. Whoa. That's a move I thought Anomalia would do to Marilyn, but she must have took that from her. Oh, a running knee to the face. Good Lord, that might have broke her nose. That wouldn't look good on her pretty face. She would hate that. She would be real mad about that. Isabella's the type to hold a grudge. Oh, just squashes Anomalia. Good Lord. Slice bread number dose. Oh, but Hurricane Rana, Marcella out of nowhere. Perfect timing, as always. She's got quite a keen eye for timing. She was a dancer in her past. She's got great footwork. Acrobatic moves. You just saw that split-legged leg drop earlier. Damn. Knows how to kick. Kicking the shit out of Marilyn Shade. She's gone. Anomalia now. Oh. Got out of the way there. In a hurricane run into Anomalia. It just looks funny when they do moves like that to her. Such a small competitor. I think she stands at five foot three here. That makes her the ultimate underdog. Rey Mysterio-like for our women's division. She's top rope. Some, she does some incredible things. Oh my God, look at that victory roll. She had a pin, but she lost her grip. That's a tough move to pull off. Couldn't quite stretch out and grab the legs. Again, her height probably didn't help. Nope. Bailed out of that move. Wanted to go for something else here. Ah, and it gets reversed. 
Maryland might be going for that coffin drop, just like her boyfriend. Yep. Oh, coffin drop. Didn't get all of it. But got her back. Maryland right there. Or Marcella right there. Uh oh. She's trying to grab her. There she goes. Uh oh. Should have wrapped her hair up in a ponytail or something because you're going to get stomped out. Oh. That's brutal. Just pulling her hair. Stepping on her hair. Could have ripped out that entire lock of hair. Even more. My God. What a dirty move from Isabella Marcella. And Hurricane Rana. Anomaly is out of the ring. Just Marilyn and Marcella now. Oh, reversed. Some elbows and forearms coming from Isabella Marcella. Oh, wonder if she knows Santino Morella. Marilyn Shade fighting back. Deep throats are. Not only a too busy Tawny like Rey Mysterio would. Oh, jawbreaker. And not the Ed Ed Nettie Fun candy cut. Oh, another one. A second one. Oh, hits her in the back again. One. Oh, that should have been it. That definitely would have been it. If it wasn't for that triple threat element, folks. So hard to get a fall in a match like this. There's always somebody else to take out. Just going to try it again here. Well, maybe not. Just having second thoughts. Anomalia. Oh, didn't see her. Here she comes. Oh, Santon. For the pin. No, Marcella takes out the ref. That's one way to do it. That's the easiest way to do it. Oh, Erock says that uh, he heard that her and Santino are cousins. You know what? I think that's canon. Cousin of Santino Morella, Isabella Marcella is great. That means the Marcellas and the Morellas got together one time. Oh shit, brass knuckles. She had a pair of brass knuckles. Anything's legal in a triple threat match, unfortunately. Two and three, I wouldn't expect Marilyn Shea to get up after that. Isabella Marcella, the cousin of Santino Morella, gets another win for the fellas. Hmm? Oh, brother. Look at that move right there. That could have done it, but Marilyn was right there anyway. So the hair pull, that was nasty. That was nasty. Marilyn seemed to have this one in the bag right towards the end, but his brass knuckles, unpredictable. I mean, anything goes in this match, so. There she is, the whatever flower she's got of Italy. <laughs> That definitely is gonna need some reworking, that nickname. Oh my God, I'm in love. I'm in love with Isabella. I just don't want her to, to uh, pull on my hair like that. That's, that would suck. Good thing I keep it short. We've got a six man tag team match. Trios, baby. Against two very, very evil, spooky demonic teams, bro. But very different vibes. Yeah, dude, get your boots on, bro. You, you gotta get gorilla. Get in gorilla, you rock. The music's going down. The lights are up. There you go. That was quick, dude. You're quick. There he is, the demon. Half demon, formerly known as Eric. <laughs> now known as Sanctum. He lives inside of Iraq. Because he was summoned by those two devil worshiping Satanists. <laughs> it's real, the demons. Hurry up, announcer Tron. That's them, folks. From the other side of darkness, we've got Lucian. We've got Diabolus. And of course, we've got Sanctum. Lights on. Whoa. How the fuck do these guys do that? It's still a mystery to me. That's part of having supernatural powers, I guess. 
And the disciples of darkness, yes, they conjured up a demon and they needed a body to inhabit. And they needed a leader. And they found that leader in Sanctum. A demon of the nine circles of hell or whatever the fuck it's called. I'm trying to go real deep on your lore here. <laughs> You're right. Just riffing. Oh man, this is these. It's a nice music video now, or entrance video. Some trippy shit, bro. This guy's like a fucking cult, bro. I mean, the other team's like a cult too, I guess. Magic, because of reasons, dude. It's wrestling. He just reasons. Here they come, like ghost skeleton crew we know as the Empire Pain of course it's Emperor Pain in the middle Hecatome on the left with the ram's head Havoc on the right with the plague mask these neo-punk post-apocalyptic meshing style crew is pretty tight they're a tough trio to fuck with uh, let me tell you oh sorry Enrico he's not here he's not here guys He's getting ready for his match tonight. He's got a big match. He's taking out Finn in a manager in a cage match. It's gonna be crazy. Of course, Nocto will be there too. He'll be one of the one of the ones in the cage. Empire of Pain know how to make an entrance, folks. They've got hammers. They've got cool uh, overlay transitions or whatever. <laughs> Whatever you call this technique. <laughs> Don't fuck with the Empire Pain. But I mean, if I was a bet man, that's pretty 50 50 right now. These are two dominant factions we have here at GPW. One, a well established, probably the first faction in on GPW, the Empire Pain. And then one of the hottest new groups we've got, dude. Coming out of nowhere, literally. Like demons in the night. All of a sudden, I'm just like, I remember I, I think Lucien and Diabolis came in and ran in on somebody one day, some tag team, and I was like, they look cool, sign them, you know? I didn't know they were going to go sign a, you know, conjure up a demon, and then when I saw the demon, you know, in the sanctum, I'm just like, well, all right, he looks cool, we'll sign him. <laughs> so we'll just come here and then I sign him later, <laughs> like immediately. That's what happened with the Disciples of Darkness. Came out of nowhere. Oh, Lucian in there with Havoc right now. Targeting the leg. Didn't break his freaking leg yet, but could happen. Oh, kick to the back of the freaking neck, though. Still going for the neck. Brain buster. Fisherman brain buster. You know it would be a really tight match? I just realized, like, what the Disciples of Darkness are like. Maybe I indirectly was inspired by um, House of Black. Because that would be a really cool trios match. If they had AEW character, if the internet thing still worked, the server for this particular game I'm using, I would download them as like a Forbidden Door match, but maybe next year. Maybe next season, folks. House of Black versus Disciples of Darkness? I don't know. Can't confirm nor deny that. It's too far ahead in the future. Here we go. Havoc. Oh, nice dropkick. Snapmare dropkick combo to be precise. Havoc throws Lucy in the corner. Not where he wants to be. That's Empire Pain territory. Tags in. Hecatome. These two men were two time, if not three time, if my memory's shit. Tag team champions. I confidently can say two, but I. Part of me wants to think it's three. Oh, Hecatome matches well with Sanctum size there, but Emperor Pain probably matches even better. Emperor Pain, I'd say, is. He's taller, so I would say Hecatome's wider. Well, speaking of that, here comes Emperor Payne. He's had enough leader versus leader right now. Oh, my God. Fist flying. Mr. Rex, welcome in. Yeah, you were you were uh, you were managing CC, but we didn't want to like 
give you the full truth because we wanted you to in the chat. It was deceptive. <laughs> we got you. You made an appearance. You had to get, you know, be there for it. You have your obligations. You're in a contract now, CC. You have to show up every week, just like these real wrestlers do. And then I say, if I got something for you or not. <laughs> this week I had something for you, but it was just TV time. It wasn't a match. Most people love that shit. You get a week to rest. Now you, CC, I know you're eager. You're eager. You're, you're a rookie. Might be the only rookie we actually had. True, a true rookie, like first year out. We had a few of those last season, but they're at least one year. They're in their sophomore year now. Might hit their sophomore slump. Who's going to hit the sophomore slump this year? Gonna look out for the season two characters. Oh, we got to look at that coup de gras that happened earlier. Oh, we almost had a three count. It was a one and a half, but it was halfway there. Havoc still tagging off Lucian here. They haven't even tagged yet. Oh, wait, never mind. I lied. Hecatome was in there for a hot beat. Or if he's a legal man, I don't even know anymore. Just brawl, just chaos. Diabolus now in. Just made the tag. Havoc versus Diabolus. Oh! Springboard cutter. Oh, and a power slam onto the steps. Sanctum is getting destroyed. That was the strategy from Empire Pain. They know if they can take down the Demi Demon, they have a even better odds to win this match. Empire Pain had the strategy tonight. But will it pay off? Sanctum is just pissed off now. He's striking back. But heck, tell him there to save the day. They're keeping him at bay. They can't even let him tag in. Sanctum is technically a rookie since he came in at the end of this. Yeah, I would count that too. Oh, this is your true rookie season. Two. No. Sanctum being yet to uh, be pinned or submitted himself. 1-0 in singles competition. He's lost some tag team matches, but he's never been the one to take the fall. He's one of the very few that has been somewhat protected here. But he's, it's because he's fairly new here. The Kraken is the only one I, that I could think of that still has that flawless defeat ratio. Lord Bada lost. I'm thinking back. Sin lost. Oh, Kalis. We haven't seen King, King Kalis in a while after he beat the shit out of Kaven, his son. Back at Gods of the Arena, too. But yeah, he's undefeated. Um, Dread has lost a match, I remember. But he hasn't been pinned or submitted either. So he's been protected for three seasons now, too. Damn. Yeah, Dread's a monster, dude. Bam! Elbow drop. I might have lied. Yeah, Dread has gotten pinned. Now that I think about it, they lost to the Dynamite Kids in an elimination match that so had happened like that. Yeah, I lied. I'm a big fat liar. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know my GPW lore as well from time. Oh, tag made to Sanctum finally. Double team move from the Disciples of Darkness. Look at this. Boom, slingshot. Reverse suplex. And ha Havoc definitely, desperately needs to make a tag. Robin, thank you much for sticking with us. She's throwing up the GB dubs. Mr. Rex says, you like to lie? I don't try to lie. I just unintentionally get shit wrong. <laughs> so it becomes a lie because it's not factual, right? But at the time, I thought it was true. Oh man, Havoc trying to beat Sanctum while he's beating his tag team partner. It's not working. Not super effective. Oh, that drop kick almost did it. Still can't even knock him to his feet. This might do it. Oh, nice tilt the world. DD2. Oh, Diabolus with the elbow. Some back chops to Havoc. Or Havoc back chops to Sanctum. Tornado DDT, yes please. Sanctum down to the ground. Big man down. Big man back up. Oh my god, it's a two-on-one assault on Diabolus. What's Lucian doing? Go help him out, man. Oh. 
trying to beat up Havoc here. He's telling him, bitch, I got this. Not sure what he was thinking there, but, you know, Emperor Payne has been known to beat on his lackeys there. One of those relationships where he is the uh, the ruler of his little empire there. Rules with an iron fist, no pun intended. It's another group on here. Oh, look at the double team from the Empire Pain. Double knees, double the pain, double the fun. Ah, Kit Kat. Ow. Is that what that is? No, Juicy Fruit. Is that what that is? What's double the fun? What's that? Whose catchphrase is that? What candy, gum, or what the fuck? That almost did it. Sanctum back to his feet very slowly, though, gingerly. Now it's Emperor Pain and Sanctum. The two bosses going at it, basically. It's a boss battle. But it's a boss versus boss battle. Sanctum now. Got him up for the inverted crucifix. That might have done it. Oh. God damn ref. Oh, he takes out Hecatome. He trips on his feet. He's taking out Havoc. No one to save em Emperor Pain from getting sanctified. He might get sanctified. Oh no, Emperor Pain reverses. He's got a little something for him. F10. Oh, oh throws the big man down. One, two, no. Rope break. Oh shit. Sanctum gets his hand on the rope. Good, actual good call from the referee. That's a rare call. He usually misses shit like that. Had the right view for it. Sanctum fairly had his hand on the rope. Got the rope break. That saved him. Double mint gum. Thank you. Thank you, Rex. That makes sense. Oh, knee to the freaking jaw. Right in the skull. Oh, he needs more than milk now. He's going to need a whole bone transplant. Oh, tsunami splash. Somebody stole my bones. <laughs> oh, shit. Diabal is now backing him up. It's not looking good for the Empire Pain. Reverse chin lock. He's close to the rope, so he's just got to literally get his arm out there. He's in... That knee to his back is paralyzing him. He can't even move his arms. Oh, never mind. <laughs> that same arm... Got him out of the hold. What do I know? I'm just a commentator, folks. Never wrestled a match in my life. Unless you count Michael Logan, but we don't count that. We separate the art from the artist there. Oh! Double kick, double the fun, double McGum. There we go. That's gonna be a new catchphrase. <laughs> oh, Emperor Payne. Making short work of Luth Lucian. Throws him out of the ring. Oh, but Sanctum. There to hit him with a year of Nagi, a year of Woody, a year of Nagi. Uh oh, not on the LED board. That's expensive. Don't do it. Ah, you're gonna break the board. Taking down the whole crew here is the Demi Demon Sanctum, Demi Demon. And yeah, Demi, who says Demi? It's Demi. Demi dummy. And it's just chaos here, dude. All three fighting with each other here. All six men going at it. I can't even call this if I wanted to. There's three moves happening at once here. Lucian is taking out Havoc in the middle of the ring. Pain down. Who else is down? Uh, Diabal is down. Sanctum, Hecatome taking each other out of the corner here. Well, it's more or less Sanctum taking out Hecatome. Oh, there goes the ref. It was a matter of time before he gets involved in the chaos. It's like a tornado out here. <laughs> you get close to it, you're going to get swooped up in it, bro. It's a tornado out here. It's not tornado tag. Don't get it confused. I'm confusing people now. Top rope, Lucy, and I think he's actually the legal man. I don't even know anymore. I cannot tell. Nope. I think it's Sanctum still. Yep, must be Sanctum in uh, Hecatome. That's my guess. I'm going to... We'll go with that. Nope, maybe not. Havoc and Sanctum. There we go. Back to how it should be. Order restored for at least the moment. Both of the Empire Pain won in. He can take his pick. Oh, he picked the wrong one. He went for Hecatome and then he got hit. Pain trying to... Yep, throws him right off. That was a dumb move by Sanctum. He does not belong in the top row either. He's going to hurt himself. 
Payne wants at him. Oh, didn't even get tagged in, but he gets him a boot to the face. Hey, hurry up, Hecatone. Get your ass in. Oh, he did, he did get the tag. He's got a, his ass rocked the moment he got tagged. Oh, Payne now throwing in Diabalas just so he could take him out. He's taking the referee out too. See you later, bend over. Oh, a clothesline to parts unknown. Oh my God, the momentum has totally shifted 180 here. Three minutes ago, if you would have told me the DOD would have won this match, I would have believed you. But now it looks like the Empire Pain, the EOP versus the DOD right now. The EOP might win this match. I don't know, oh, maybe not. I might be wrong, two. Kicked out. Hecatome kicked out, folks. This match continues. Uh-oh. But for how much longer? Inverted cross. One, two, three. Oh, Emperor Pain couldn't make it in time. Sanctum picks up a win for his boys. The DOD beats the EOP. Oh my god. That was a fun matchup. I like to see these two go at it, man. Both have a dark vibe, but they're very different dark vibes. E Rock celebrating in the chat. Because Sanctum and his disciples of darkness just pulled off another win. That means rank up. Do -do 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 -do. Keep climbing the ladder. Do -do 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 -do. Keep climbing the ladder. They've had some disappointing losses against Senshi, but they're here. They're ready to get back in it and climb back up to the top. D.O.D. Recognize. Oh shit, we got another title match, folks. Well, the one before the title match we got tonight. Triple threat title. Bully Bowers puts it on the line against Gavalor and Onria. Let's get it. Let's party. Here comes Gavalor, a bundle of fun. Nothing but positive vibes the following contest from this Gavalor. Making his way to the ring from Salt Lake City, Utah. That's right. Gal Galore. Her first season here at GPW. The drag queen who can still get mean. That's her catchphrase. I don't know. Working on it. Don't underestimate her. She's quite the competitor. High flying moves. She'll embarrass you out there too. She uh, literally did that one move where it you're in the turnbuckle and uh, you put your legs on the dude and it's the sunny kiss thing I think where you just bash your opponent's face in your ass <laughs> she did that with Rico Sleeves and it was I gotta clip that I think it is clipped but I gotta go find that clip and upload it to my new Instagram account and go follow only Logan TV on Instagram now and then uh, you know YouTube TikTok all that shit let's get it get it oh Oh, here comes Onryo, the newest member of Senshi. Another season three debuter. The samurai of the three. Well, they're... What? Oh, yeah, you don't like Senshi. That's right. That's right. You rock hate Senshi. They have a notable rivalry with the Disciples of Darkness. Always seem to get in each other's way. As they both climb the ranks in this newly... You know, this tag team division is definitely a... I know we're doing the singles match here, but that tag team division has kind of opened up since the Dynamite Kids, you know, since they uh, fell at our last free preview at Meltdown. I mean, it's in the hands of Kraos and Lord Bada, so I don't know if anybody else can take them down if they took down the Dynamite Kids, but either we saw a new long and prosperous reign of another team, the debut of that, or we just saw a vacuum that needed to be filled and we'll see what happens. See if it's the Wild West out in the tag team division. We don't know. We don't know how this is gonna go. And hopefully for Bully Bowers, this goes his way tonight. The triple threat champion. Oh yeah, I can't talk. Pinewood hit me. 
the global pro wrestling triple crown champion, Bauer! Thanks for the link, Rex. I can't talk. Pine gets mad at me if I talk. Take a moment of silence for Bully Bowers. If I whisper, it's not talking. It's my little ball. Let's get it. Title match, baby. Triple threat title on the line. A completely original title we have on here. I don't think you'll ever find a Another company that has a triple threat title, folks. It is a match-specific title belt. It's one of the most elusive ones you can obtain here. Oh, my God. Gal Galore going right for the stink face. Just rubbing ass on Bully Bowers. That's, that's what I'm talking about. She likes to have fun out there. Oh, Gal Galore really kicking ass. Oh, and using ass. This triple threat title is great because I love triple threat matches. It adds that extra element. It just seems to pick up the action even more than it already has. There's always no DQs, so you don't got to worry about rules. Oh, there's that move. There it is. Bully Bowers gets a faceful ass. Oh, Onryo. The running kick. It's a very hard title to keep a hold of because of that element of three people. You can be the champion and not even get pinned or submitted. Not even be involved with the result of the match and still lose that title. So I think the longest reigning champion we've had was Roscoe Jones, who had it maybe for two to three months. I would say three months. That's probably been the longest. It's, I'm telling you, it's hard to defend this title. Bully Bowers has already defended it twice, I believe, or once, at least once. He defended at our last uh, free for view meltdown. Might even be on the line. It'll probably be on the line on the 25th at our next free for view. The Hollywood Massacrade. We're out in LA. Do not miss that shit. Oh, neck breaker. Oh, look at Onrio. Oh, my God. I've never seen such a powerful Bronco Buster. I've never seen such powerful hits. And Gal Galore taking advantage. Luthezen. In the corner, no, Onryo. Fights out of it. Now Gal Galore in the corner. Toss down. Moonsault. Yadunzo. No. Bully Bowers says, nay. Reverse suplex. For the cover. No, rope break. Still got those rules. Oh, Gal Galore too busy taunting. Bully side. He's going to bounce. He's going to pounce. Nope. Gal Galore was coaxing him. Just so she could evade. Oh, but Gal gets kicked in the freaking face. Onryo, what's he doing? Oh, punch, kick, punch, kick, punch. Just had him trapped in the ropes. Our triple threat champion is on the ropes right now. Oh. Onryo flew off the ropes, but he didn't get anybody. That'll happen. He's new here. You must be new here. <laughs> oh, snake eyes. Oh, you didn't know? <laughs> Your ass better call somebody. I'm glad I thought of that during the GPW theme song. To add that little snippet in there. I would have kicked myself if I didn't add that. So I'm like, oh, that would have only took a minute. Holy Bowers charging himself back up in the corner. While Gal and Onryo duke it out in the opposite side of the corner. But no, here comes Bully. About to bully again. Deep throats. Gal Galore. Gets all of it. Onryo from the top rope. 
What are we going to see this samurai do? Yep. Oh, Nina Galore's face, but Bully's got the pin. One, two, trying to capitalize on that devastating knee to the face. And Gal Galore's got to sit this out for a bit. Uh, yeah. Oh, nice half Nelson suplex. I'm coming for you, boy. A technical wizard out. is Bully Bowers. He's not just an aggressive brawler. He's got the old school technical abilities of one William Regal type. He came from a long lineage of professional wrestlers. Back from even the Carney days. An old Buford Bowers wrestled under the name Buford Bowers. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say Buford Bowers first came up with the name Bully Bowers and it's been passed on through generations. His real name isn't Bully. He's just a bully and that's what people say in England. Bully! So it's, it's more of a moniker. He's Bully Bowers, bro. Passed down to the other Bully Bowers from all the way back in the Carney days, like I was saying. It went all over the world. Oh! Even in the Wild West. here. Yeah, the Lord throws Onri on the corner. No. Now Onri throws Gal in the corner. Fighting for that turnbuckle. I think Onri might have just won here. Oh, bam! What a drop kick. A springboard drop kick to the outside. Oh, here comes. Oh, shit. Lands right on Gal's head. Going for bully, though. Missed. Some stomps. Oh, trying to break up the cover right away. I don't even know why you would go for a pinfall when the man is standing right there next to you. Bully, you gotta turn around. And Onri are delivering some vicious strikes, and now it's suplex. Here comes Gal. Oh, the knee balance in Seguri. This might do it. Two, we got a new champion. No! Gal Galore almost won her first title. Calling for it. Her submission move, which we haven't quite named yet. I just gotta call it something galore. Submission galore. <laughs> I don't know, we'll work on it. That's how I come up with these finishing moves anyways. I just call it live and it sticks and sticks. Oh! Just threw her up in the air and hit her with a backbreaker. Oh, that could have done it, but Bully had it scouted. He was waiting like a snake in the grass. And just the bully stomps in the corner. Oh. Onryo spilling out to the ring. Just bully and gal left here. Oh, Kavach suplex. Vintage bully Bowers. Didn't go for the pin because he wants to go for the win. He needs to hit the Bower Tower. Got gal up in the Bower Tower. One, two, three, and Bully Bowers retains his triple threat title tonight. Bully. Didn't even have to use his bully bomb. Gotta say it was a good day. <laughs> I believe that was canon from that scene. Yeah, the scene that we didn't use, but it's there. It's canon as far as, you know, being somewhere in a Twitch VOD somewhere deep in these archives. I tend to save a lot of streams. Got all these episodes saved if you want to check out what the fuck is going on and what happened before all this shit. Not that it, you know, you don't have to know all this lore to actually enjoy this. You can just live it episode by episode. That's the beauty of wrestling. You can just jump in whenever and just be like, all right, let's do it. I'll just catch up from here. You know, it's nothing complicated. Oh, here we go. Lola Love versus Romy Yamamoto, the ghost of Hiroshima. Versus the lovely one. I forgot to say her nickname. Here she comes. She's saucy. She's a lovely one. Lola Love. La 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 la. 
She's bringing that swag this season. She ain't fucking around this season. You can see her just fit into her gimmick and her role so comfortably now. She's become a beloved figure here at Global Pro Wrestling. And she's got tough competition tonight, man. Romy Yamamoto, she don't play. If anybody can best her, it's this lady right here. Lola Love, Tennessee's finest. Very, very nimble, very flexible. She can, she, yeah, I, there's a reason she's well liked. <laughs> yep, yep, that's right. People love it. Okay. See, you hear it? You hear that response? That's why, folks. That's that pop. And this woman is not so well liked. She's more or less scary. Everybody's scared of her. I will be too. Just storms in the ring here. Yep, she's running right to right to her. So dark, she, Lola didn't even see it. The lights were basically off. Running right to Lola. That's what she does. Just storms in the ring like a some fire, like a ghost out of hell, a bat out of hell. That's a better terminology. Her entrance music still on, whooping her to her own theme song here. This match hasn't even started yet. Romy, oh, tosses her on the announce table. We just put that back up. Only got three left in the bag. She's about to remove her mask, hopefully. There she is. Romy came up short in her Inferno title match at Meltdown. It was a hell of a match. Could have been anybody's game. She even wore that mask during the match to like shield her from some face shot blows and also she had multiple she could store multiple poison mist inside of that mask somehow we saw it happen twice but it wasn't enough to uh, dethrone our inferno champion <laughs> what was that <laughs> just a cool shuffle dance I guess from Lola Love our inferno champion Sophia Perez these two ladies probably duking out for that title a win here could boost them up in the ranks for that division as well. Lola Love had a few opportunities. I think she had one opportunity at uh, the Inferno title at Gods of the Arena 2 when the match was, or when the title was first initiated. It's a fatal four way match to crown our first champion. She came up short. Sophia was the one and only winner so far there. She had a world title shot against Starlet. Came up short, but she showed out. That was like the start of her ascension. Now she's here to try to prove herself against another rising star here. Romy Yamamoto. A dangerous one. Oh! Couldn't throw her off her balance and hit her with a drop kick. Romy tried to shake the ropes and everything. Ended up just hurting herself. Here comes the ghost of Hiroshima. Ooh, cool. <laughs> she means business. Oh, here comes the forearms. Off the ropes. Oh! Side kick off the rope. Karate kick, whatever you want to call it. Savat kick. I don't remember. Pinfall, just a pure aggression from Romi Yamamoto. She looks like the grudge. If the grudge had a baby with a kiss demon. <laughs> That's exactly what it looks like. Oh shit. Misses the body splash, gets hit with a drop kick. And Lola Love back on her feet, back on her grind. Pinfall, pinfall. Can she get it? No. I'm dancing, Dad. I'm dancing. <laughs> Going 
going under, going over. Oh, look at this, and a neck breaker. Look at the kicks, the vicious kicks from Romy. Romy ain't your homie. She rolls lonely. <clears throat> oh my god, the kicks just don't stop with Romy Yamamoto. This might be it, folks. But it knocked her out. That's it. No. Lola Love. Somehow fighting out of it. Two and a half. Almost got her. Oh, Hiroshima's revenge. No. Lola had it scouted. And here comes the lovely kicks. Oh. Such lovely kicks. Might be going for the love bomb. Oh, no. We will pee you indeed. Lola. Oh, just got noped by Romy. Wasn't home. Nobody was home. But that backdrop was. Nails the backdrop. Top rope now. Romy's about to fly. Oh, there's the splash. Connects this time. Two. No. Lola Love. I can't believe it. I thought she was done for. Don't get up. You're going to regret it. No, reversed it again. Got her up. Yes, it is. The love bomb. Oh. She just got love bombed. Two. Three. Lola Love picks up the victory. What a match, folks. That was high paced, high flying. All over the place. And just like that on a... Just a turn of a dime. A match. You can go from one result to the next. I thought Romy had it. I thought, he, I thought she had her number this night. That's just going to piss off Romy in the back. She's just going to come even angrier the next time we see her. But Lola Love is going to be one happy lady with another victory tonight. I'd even say. Man, I'd say she's... Uh, Inferno title contender for sure. I can't confirm or deny her number one contender status, but she's high ranking. She's at least one or two right now. That is for sure. With that win. Oh, oh. She's so shao sham. Oh, here we go, guys. We're almost coming to the end of the world tournament we've been doing here for just about two months. Triple Threat semifinals. There's going to be two Triple Threat matches. One this week, one next week. we got the finalists in the West Hemisphere, the West Bracket. It's Owen Winters. Is it Roscoe Jones and Diego Cruz? Forgot Roscoe screwed Ryan Lyons out of, uh, out of his match. Well, the referee more or less did it. Ref, uh, the ref counted three, but his hand was on the rope, I believe, or his foot was something like that. It was a controversial win for sure, but Roscoe Jones, technically the winner, so. And here comes Diego Cruz, another newbie to GPW. Well timed announcer Tron, our AI announcer robot. This is Diego Cruz from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Been making a hell of an impression, a deep run in this tournament. And it's his debut season, folks. Defeated Dr. Destructor in round two to get to this match. Yeah, I don't remember who he beat in, the, in, the, in round one. To be honest, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. He made it here, dude. I think I have it up somewhere, but I'm not going to bother with it. Here's a man who beat Bully Bowers in a surprise roll-up situation. He beat, like, Diente or some shit. <laughs> I can't remember that either. Round one was a month ago. We're in the present now. We're looking ahead to the future. This man might be the future GPW right here. The Canadian. The proud Canadian. A. The operator, Owen Winters. He may be a proud Canadian, but he made his name over in Japan. Worked out this operator character. 
a man who just knows how to operate. Smooth operator, you know, he's so smooth in the ring. That's where he got the nickname, The Operator. Got this cool looking biker, Neo Japan biker gimmick going on. Because it, it looks dope. <laughs> I don't know. Don't have to explain that part, I guess. <laughs> yeah, see, he knows about it. <laughs> he points to it. That means it's real. The smooth operator himself. Owen Winters. This man is like the Canadian Finn Balor, bro. Best way to sum it up for you. And he's making a hell of a deep run for his first year here at GBW as well. E Rock says, South is one of my favorite on the albums. I've been hearing that a lot, so. That's the one I've been pushing the most, E Rock. I think it's the most universally favorite. But if I, it depends who it is, right? If I'm showing, like, my mom one of the songs, it'd be that one. If I'm showing like uh, a rap fan though I'd show him like Supernova or something this is what happened two weeks ago this was referring to this was round two Roscoe Jones versus Ryan Lyons pure arch rival nemesis here it was a controversial win Ryan Lyons had his hand or his foot on the on the bottom rope which should have been a rope break but he didn't get the rope break from the official he counted three Roscoe Jones technically got the win and uh Ryan Lyons, I bet he's salty about it. He really wanted to represent America in this tournament, let alone, you know, if you get to the finals in this tournament, if you win this thing, you get a GBW title shot in September, bro. One of these men, though, can only get one step closer. This is the unique part about a 24-person tournament. They had to get down to a triple threat rule, so that I'm glad <laughs> it's not like a UFC tournament where it's got to be one-on-one. -on -one. That would have put me in a bind. That <laughs> would have really fucked me over. But I'm like, wait a minute, triple threat. Perfect. And Diego and Owen Winter's going at it. And Roscoe's just waiting for his right time. Fans seem to start turning a new leaf on Roscoe Jones. He still has a firm hatred of uh, Ryan Lyons, a uh, baby face here. But people just respect. I think they respected him through that rivalry. They got to see both men shine throughout their battles. And people have come to love Roscoe Jones. I hear it. I feel it. I hear the response from the crowd. They're brutally honest a lot of the times. <laughs> They'll boo a lot of people that they're clearly not supposed to boo, but they are anyways. They're a very fickle audience. <laughs> These GPW fans that attend the live show here. Not the chat. I love the chat. They're great. It's these goddamn people that pay for the tickets here to get here virtually. <laughs> Those people in the crowd, dude, they all look the same. They look like clones, man. I don't know who is Rico's in charge of promoting to these guys. I don't know who he's grabbing because, you know, he can, he can go into the digital world. Rico both exist in the physical and the digital. I only exist in the physical. So <laughs> that's, how, that's how we're canning that. Oh man, just backflip attacked him. It was like a backflip headbutt. Not sure if that was going for, but it worked momentarily. Roscoe Jones. Oh, eat the feet. We're ripping that arm off, trying to work on that arm that's got that kinesio tape on it from a previous shoulder injury back in Japan. When he was wrestling the likes of. Uh, the fuck's even in New Japan anymore? <laughs> Naito. He was wrestling Naito. I don't know. It's the one that comes to mind. Jay White, even though he's AEW now. Oh, God. Diego got him up. Oh, damn. Got him up again. No. That was an interesting series of moves here. But Oh, Roscoe with the Superman punch. Oh, Owen went for something big and he missed. Look at the combinations. It's like a seven hit combo. This was Street Fighter. Oscar Jones showing out right now. The triple threat element once again just makes it even more chaotic. Makes you uh, predict less, less chance to predict who this is gonna, who's gonna be. Could be any one of these three here. 
We got the vet, Roscoe Jones, and two newbies. They're not rookies by any means, but they're newbies. Of course, Diego Cruz made his name in Puerto Rico and CMLL. Owen Winters went to the other side of the world. Made his name out there. Roscoe Jones made his name right here. The man from Baltimore, Maryland. Toughed it out as many bad gimmicks back in the day throughout the years. We know him only as Roscoe Jones, but he had a lot of old gimmicks that didn't work. Rastafari Jones, in, uh, Speedway Jones. There were all these dumb gimmicks, and he stripped them all one day, and he's like, nah, I'm just going to be me, man. Oh, my God. And there's blood. We got blood. Roscoe's going to sit this one out. He's bleeding. Oh. There's like a suplex, and he just threw him forward. Diego Cruz looking impressive. The Puerto Rican powerhouse. Oh, a clothesline and a spear. Brings him out to the middle. He might be going for the... Oh, a broken arrow. Diego, top row, but no, Roscoe there just... Oh, couldn't get him off, he was a big dude. Couldn't get him off in time. And pause. <laughs> Roscoe wants payback for busting him open. Nobody makes him bleed his own blood. Oh, sky high. Bye-bye. Oh, my God, Roscoe Jones. Rolling face buster. Oh, he's got the count. What the hell is Ryan Lyons doing there? Two, three. That would have been a three. Oh, what the hell? Ryan Lyons out of nowhere came down ringside, put the foot on the rope of Owen Winters. Rope breaked. The ref actually called that one. How ironic. Oh my God, Roscoe, oh, and he did turn around. He didn't turn around in time. What is this, a package powerbomb? The Puerto Rican powerbomb. Boom, a Puerto Rican powerbomb. That might be it. No, two, no, oh my God. Ryan Lines, you bastard, you almost screwed it up. Oh wait, no, the cruise missile. Diego Cruz with the cruise missile. Could it be? One, two, no! <laughs> I thought Diego had had it twice there. That was almost it. Oh, the Jonestown Massacre! Jones still might win this. One, two, despite Ryan Line's best efforts. No, Diego kicks out. Everybody kicking out of finishers right now. It's that Puerto Rican power bomb, bro. It's vicious. He can bridge that in a pin, too. I don't know what happened there. It was just so much authority, he lost grip. Uh-oh. That's gonna hit him with that cruise missile again. No, he's gonna go for whatever this is. Oh, nothing pretty there, just straight power. Uh-oh. I think Roscoe Jones saw Ryan Lyons, who dipped off into the crowd after what happened when he put Owen Winter's foot on the rope Breaking the count in the win for Roscoe Jones. He would have assumed that would have been for a win. Easily been a three count. Ryan Lyons fucking over Roscoe Jones for getting screwed out of his match last week. He took that to heart. He really wanted to represent America, man. But uh, Roscoe Jones is the last American left in this. Well, if you want to count Diego, he's kind of American. Well, he's basically American, technically American. But he's out of Puerto Rico, so. I consider them a sovereign nation. Even though they're not. <laughs> oh, shit. But that's a whole political thing we'll get into at some other time. No, we won't. We'll just avert the subject. Here we go. Diego Cruz might be hitting that cruise missile again. Nope. I keep miscalling it Olympic Slam. Cruz. Oh my god, that was gnarly. The Cruzifix, he calls that one the Cruzifix. There's a new one. Perfect. Hopefully I remember that. Bank that one in there. Hit him with a Cruzifix. Uh-oh. Not looking good for these two gentlemen. What the hell? The Puerto Rican powerhouse is insane, dude. Diego Cruz, what are you doing, bro? Oh my god, he's... Parading around the ring with two people on his back. Diego's a monster. 
Oh my god. Holy shit. The crowd says this is awesome. I agree. Three. Diego Cruz moves on to the finals. We'll see you at Hollywood Massacre in Diego. Holy shit. Impressive win. And Puerto Rican powerhouse powers his way to another win. What a run this man's on. Undefeated as well. One of the few undefeated. Of course, he, you know, just started. But he's going through this grueling tournament. Holy shit, folks. Here we go. The main event, guys. A first time ever manager in a cage match. It's going to be fucking tight. It's basically um, a cage match for the managers. No. It bars the managers from doing any funny business. They are trapped in that cage for the entire match. If, but it's almost got uh, hybrid lumberjack rules. If a competitor gets thrown into one of those cages, it's fair game. It's fair game if they enter the cage. So there's that little spin. It's supposed to prevent the people in the cage from getting out. But if you get in the cage with them, you're fucked. It, then it turns into a lumberjack match, bro. And here comes Rico Sleaze. This was out of the, the mind of Rico Sleaze. He didn't want Nacho to interfere. This was two weeks ago. Finn won his title back, and he got immediately called out right away by Rico Sleaze. Looks like Rico finally wants to win himself a title here. He's yet to win any kind of titles. Although he's not even technically a wrestler here. He's a manager. <laughs> and just keeps sticking his nose. And co-owner. And he just keeps sticking his nose in people's business. Trying to win, I guess he just wants gold now. He's been trying to recruit more people, and he's trying to get some, you know, he's trying to win all the gold for his group. And this might be his first shot at gold, to be honest. He's bitching and moaning about Finn. He wanted, he challenged him, called him out. Finn doesn't back down from a challenge. There he is, got his gear on now. Looks like he picked Leo Marceau to be the man in the cage. His left hand man. Here comes your chat's champion with his buddy Nacho. The man he chose to be his lumberjack manager in the cage. Ooh, Rex, that's a really good idea. I just gotta record myself doing, or even that, I'll just use the beginning part of that song. You know the sleazy song? The Rica! It's a really good idea. I, gotta add, I definitely gotta add that. Store that in my mental banks, too. Gotta remember the crucifix. <laughs> I gotta remember. I gotta remember the fucking uh, Rica sound bite. That's a really good idea. You know, that might even be a good idea for when people, like, uh, I have to replace all the sounds for when people sub and raid and all that kind of shit. So, that would make a lot of sense. Since a, Rico, a little Rico shows up anyways, right? Little Rico. Oh, my God. Is that a spinoff? Is that a spinoff waiting to happen, little Rico? Is it a child version of Rico? <laughs> what was Rico like as a child? That's a good, that's, Introducing shit, I gotta find a, like a, they should make Bully again, but online, and you can play as someone you create, and I'll make a little Rico, that'd be hilarious. Please make that Rockstar Games. People have been waiting on a Bully sequel. Anyways, Chat Championship, main event, Rico Sleaze has the audacity to challenge Finn for that Chat's Championship, a, a title belt synonymous with the goodest boy, Sir Finley right there. He's your Chats champion, folks. And he's been a great Chats champion. Two-time already. Lost it in the very first episode, but he won it back. He's back. Three weeks in this rain. So it's lasted three times as long. Yeah, I'm sure. I, I, I literally just have to take the sound bite. So I can just... With Logic Pro, anything's possible, man. If you got producing material like that, I can literally take any sound and just cut things off, you know? Let's hit the mess of the time. Oh, Rico backed away right away. He might be having second thoughts about this challenge here. 
in this new match type. He actually created this match. This is actually Rico Slee's thought here. As a way to, I guess, have some backup, but ensure that Nacho doesn't get too squirrely. Decide to beat him up, even though Nacho's an honorable man. And he would only attack unless attacked. But if he gets, if somebody gets thrown in that cage, dude, it's fair game. Like I said, bam, double stomps by Finn. Finley's not gonna go lying down, that's for sure. Oh, hit him with a leg drop from the top. Crowd's pumped. They love their chats champion. Yeah, I definitely, I'll just have both, I guess. Do a channel and a sound bite for this, you know. Two birds, one stone. Get two birds stoned at once. And Rico now, feeling a bit more confident. Oh, he's still got his rings on his finger. That's why he knocks people down so furiously sometimes. He's got a bunch of rings on his hand. It's like the dynamite diamond ring when you get hit with that shit. But it's also being thrown by Rico, so they're not totally knocked out. Or bleeding because he throws like a pussy. Oh, Finn with the flying furball move to the outside. Let's go, Finn. Throws him into the cage. My God. You can use that cage with a weapon, folks. It's all legal here. No DQs. Missed that kick. He's whiffing this kick. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's going for there. He's a dog. Just let him do what he does. He'll get it. He'll figure it out. No, or he gets thrown into the cage. Tossed right into that cage. My God. In these multiple shark cages we've just <laughs> barricaded our managers in. <laughs> Oh, he's talking shit to my dog. Oh, punches Finn right in the gut. He's going to throw up after that one. With those rings. Oh, he's got a chair now. Oh, we'll be worried about the rings now. Worry about that chair, dude. Finn gets bonked in the head with a chair. Here comes, er, there's our main event manager, Herbie Hebner. Only here for pay-per-views and important matches. Gets smoked with a chair still. That we couldn't uh, come to agreement on. He's, he wanted to resign, and he, part of his deal was uh, they can't touch me or they can't hit me or whatever. Mike, dude, can't promise you that. Rico went in and negotiated and worked him down. <laughs> he said to pay him more. Give him insurance. No, we don't give him insurance. We just pay him more to cover his insurance. Finn's got chairs and tables and ladders. Oh my, there's a big stack over there. Good Lord. I don't know what the f hell is gonna happen in this match. But it looks like absolute chaos could ensue at any moment here. Rico's talking shit to Finn. Oh, you gotta stop talking shit, bro. But he just can't help himself. The man is a motor mouth. And a, and a mid to poor karaoke singer. <laughs> oh, the rings to the head of my dog. Quit beating up my dog, dude. Come on, Finn, get him. Get him, Finn. I'm trying to stay unbiased here, but it's very personal. This match is for me. It's a very personal match right now. Get him, Finn. Two. Rico kicks out. My thoughts exactly, Iraq. They will never unionize. Not as not as long as Rico's around. <laughs> Chair. You just slapped my dog in the mouth. <laughs> Those rings again. Oh. Well, if we allow Nefiro to have that golden claw, I guess Rico can have his rings. We can't do shit about it. It's in his contract. He doesn't have a contract. He owns half the damn place. Leg drop. 
He's even working with the Mafia now, of course. Got his new muscle. Omerta, he demoted his previous muscle, Sergei, to his bodyguard. He was uh, displeased with his season two performance. And now Sergei's is constantly trying to earn the love and affection of Rico. Trying not to get kicked out of the group. That's just what I get from it. That's the vibes I get from it. Oh, shit. Rico about to hit that st steel chair he put in the corner. Slimed out of there like a slug. Oh, no. He threw Finn in the chair. No. He just bonked the chair. Finn's big head gets in the way again. Not looking good for our chance champion. Oh, no. The exposed turbo. No. Oh, he tossed him on the table, which was stacked with some ladders. No, oh, I knew it was a matter of time for that was going to happen. I totally forgot about that, though. Momentarily. And Finn is out of it, dude. Rico talking shit to him. What is Rico doing? He's trying to... Is he going for Nacho? Oh, he's talking shit to Nacho now. He's talking trash. He's coaxing him, but Nacho can't do anything unless he fully enters. That side. Oh, no. There he is. He's in it. <laughs> Should have been talking shit. It's fair game now. Nacho. Oh, Finn just jumps in the cage. Hit him with a flying fur ball. It's two on one now. Nacho trying to let Finn work. He's getting caught up in the action here. Thrown into the cage. The beatdown ensues. There we go. Nacho getting some kicks in. Now it's a lumberjack match at this point of the match. <laughs> Fists are flying. Oh, throwing him into the cage again. Rico's getting just gang beat by the best. Was it the best buds or the best friends? No, it's not the best friends. Finn and friends. The goodest boys. The goodest boys. That's right. They're the good boys. He's the goodest boy. And the team is the good boys. That's right. Oh, shit. They're working like bad boys right now. They're just slamming Rico repeatedly. Repeatedly. <laughs> Into the cage. Oh, my God. Finn, what is he doing? Figuring out what to do. Oh, nice. Double team. By the good boys. Just tossing him into the cage. There we go. Nacho finally throws him back in. I think he's had enough. Rico's been beaten profusely. Finn going to the top once again. Another leg drop. No, he missed. Rico is somehow fighting. He's well padded, that's why. He was a lot more fragile in his early matches before he wised up and put all his gear on. <laughs> He's even got a little quarterback vest under that <laughs> under that shirt. Whatever the flak jackets they call it. Oh, I wish Finn put a flak jacket on. See, he just got chest first into an exposed turnbuckle. Whatever D'Lo Brown was wearing on his chest. <laughs> That's what he's got. Oh, Rico going for the Rico pedigree. The sleaze agree. The sleazy agree. <laughs> sure. This might be it. No, a new chance champion. No! Re I was going to say Rico kicks out. Finn kicks out. And this match continues, folks. The first of its kind, a manager in a cage match. It's been a hell of a ride. Oh, God, it's not over. No, Rico's going to powerbomb on top of the cage. Oh, my God. Finn was perched on top of the cage. Just got dropped. Oh, God, Rico, you've got to be kidding me. Rico! Oh! <laughs> Body splashed him off the top of the cage. Finn is... Floating in midair, bent in half. Oh my lord. He is destroyed. By God. He is floating. There he goes. Tossed into the apron. Now the double team begins. Here comes Liam Marceau. He wants his hand on that dog. 
Here comes the fist. Oh. Using that cage. Should have made these cages a little wider. <laughs> Should have taken up like half the ring. In the, the cage beatdown ensues over here out in the sleazy cage corner. Finn now a battered dog. A battered and bruised puppy. The Chad's champion doesn't look to be doing so hot. Rico Sleaze seems to be just as cocky as ever and confident that this match is sure fire will get him a win, but I don't know about it because here's Finn. Look at this man. Look at this boy. Look at him go. Bam! <laughs> just punched the absolute shit out of his face. He's lucky he has that headgear on. That might have knocked him out. Just a part of the face. He's done that to me before. Not fun. Oh, but Finn returned to the fifth. Oh, dumped him into the cage. Out of the floor. Here he goes. Oh! Finn just willing to put his life on the line. He doesn't know better. He's 0 to 100 real quick. If anybody not knows him. Very hyper. Very up in your shit. But we love him for it. And we want to see this man get a win. This dog get a win. Oh, there goes Rico. Oh, off the ladder. Here he comes. Whoa. Down the ladder. A hurricane runner. A suicida hurricane runner. Onto a ladder. Rico is bent in half. All instinct, no fear. That's that's he should have that tattooed on his hind end. <laughs> That is the motto. That's Finn's motto, man. Oh, Rico caught him distracted. With that announce table, that's our last announce table of the night. We're lucky we made it to the end here. We're lucky this is the main event. We may not even need announce tables. It looks like we got tables on the ring. He's got a steel chair, though. Oh! Anything goes in this match, unfortunately. Only rule is the managers can't leave the cage. That's 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 about it. <laughs> no more chairs. Rico just using chairs as a toy here. Can't find his trademark bat, but he found some wood. Yeah. Oh. But here comes Finn. Kicked him in the shin. Trying to get the win. Rico's like, ah, ah, got him right in the knee. Like Peter Griffin. Just throwing him around. No respect shown here. You done pissed the dog off. Who got the dog hot? Oh, Rico said no. Oh, no. Finn, get up. Get up. It's not going to end well for you. No, a sleazy green on the, not a sleazy pedigree. On the announce table, you gotta be kidding me. The crowd loves it, but as a proud dog dad, I am concerned. <laughs> Finn hasn't moved. He hasn't moved. That's a long time in this game, or show, or whatever you want to call it. Finn is back up, thank God. But he's he's on Dream Street here. Oh, he's going to grab a chair. Rico's got a chair. Oh, we got a chair war here. It's like Star Wars here. But it's chairs. Oh, God. They're talking to shoot to each other here. It's a duel. Oh, he lost the duel. They fired off at the exact same time as somehow Rico. A slightly quicker draw. My God, there's just junk everywhere in this ring right now. This is turning into an hardcore match. So much for any sort of order in here. 
It was all a ruse to make sure Nacho can't leave his post in a no disqualification match. So he can just have his way with Finn. Oh, hit him in the, with the exposed turnbuckle. What's Rico doing here? Oh no. Rico's got a hold. Oh, right in the exposed turnbuckle. Finn might be even knocked out right now. I don't even know. He's gonna throw him in all the junk. Oh my God, he threw him onto a bunch of ladders and a bunch of tables and a bunch of chairs. The whole TLC just came raining down on him. Oh my God, he might be done. Somehow, what is, on instincts, all, no fear, all instincts like we said. Oh, a sleazy stunner. The sleazy stunner. Talking shit to him, no. No, you can't, this can't be. Oh no. Oh God, it's a dark day in GPW, folks. Rico Sleaze has won a title here. You gotta be kidding me. Rico Sleaze is the Chad's champion. Oh. Never gonna fucking shut up about this, dude. <laughs> he's, he's never gonna shut up about this. He's just gonna rub it in her face to the end of time that he actually won a title here. And he'll always refer to it as, no matter how long he's had this title, or will have this title, he's always gonna say he was the greatest one of them, you know?